When Canon decided to release C-Log to the Canon 5D Mark IV back in March of 2017, it proved to videographers and filmmakers alike that Canon viewed their ultimate DSLR as a powerful option in the video creation world. But it isn't free. So is it worth it? Well, we created a short film to test out its capabilities in a range of different lighting and filming conditions, so let's find out. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another filmmaking video. My name is Kai Song and if you're new here we talk a lot about camera gear, videography, filmmaking and editing techniques, tips and tricks and general visual creativity. So if any of that interests you then do consider subscribing and hitting up that bell button down below. And today we're talking all about C-Log or Canon Log. Now C-Log is something that you generally find on Canon's higher range of cinema EOS cameras like the EOS 300 Mark II and essentially it extends the dynamic range of your camera and so helps to retain detail in dark shadows as well as bright highlights. So fundamentally what you end up with is a very neutral, what some people would describe as a very washed out image or desaturated image. But because it has retained the details in the shadows and the highlights, you can then color grade it and really make your image pop. Now, according to Canon, C-Log on the 5D Mark IV delivers up to 12 stops of dynamic range at ISO 400. It also reduces noise, particularly in the shadow areas that can appear during color grading. Now, Canon also claims that using C-Log makes it a lot easier for videographers and filmmakers to color match the footage that they shoot on other cameras. And of course, this is gonna be extremely useful if you're using different cameras in your arsenal to shoot the same event or subject. So I've personally had C-Log installed on my Canon 5D Mark IV now for a few months, and I've been impatiently waiting to test it out properly on some sort of project. So last week we wrote and shot a short film called The Silent Place. It's basically about monsters that hear really well and people who aren't very quiet. And we did this all within a couple of hours with the hope of testing out C-Log functionality in a wide range of different scenarios. The safest route is from the main road. So if you actually wanna check out that short film, I will put a link down in the description below. Go check it out. So getting C-Log installed isn't as simple as just downloading something from the Canon website and doing it yourself, which would be nice. Nope, you've got to take it to an approved dealer who takes it behind the counter and does some sort of secret technical wizardry and then returns your camera with the option installed. Oh, and did I mention that it's gonna cost you more than just the bus fare to get to the shop? So in the UK, at the time of making this video, it costs about £85 to get C-Log installed. And for all of you guys and girls in the US, it costs about $100 for the privilege. So is it worth the investment? Well, I'm gonna give you my opinion at the end of this video, but if you have already installed it, do let me know what you think in the comment section down below, whether you think it was worth it or not. Once installed, it's really simple to turn C-Log on. You simply go to the camera settings, you select the fifth option and you select Canon Log and turn it on. Here, you will also be able to modify things like the sharpness, the strength, saturation and the hue. Now options to shoot in with regards to the aspect ratio and frame rate include 4K at 29.97p, 4K at 23.98p, full HD at 29.94, 29.97p, 23.98p, and all of this is in all I and IPB compression, as well as 4K 24p and Full HD 24p. Again, all I and IPB compression is available. Canon Log also works with several 5D Mark IV camera options, including the ability to use DPAF or dual pixel autofocus, which is a massive plus in my opinion. So for our short film, The Silent Place, we decided to shoot in 4K C-Log, the very best that the 5D Mark IV has on offer. Now someone has already noticed that this was not actually shot in 24p, it was in fact 29.97p, which was a little bit of an oversight on our part. Definitely a lesson for the future. Now, just to deviate quickly here, one disadvantage of filming in 4K on the 5D Mark IV is the 1.74 crop factor, which means that your image will be cropped down. We can see a few examples here with the 24 to 105 millimeter L lens, where you can see that the crop factor really means that you have a lot less room to move around in and that can be a little bit annoying for your shots. 
So this wasn't an issue initially as we were shooting outside in the park with lots of space to move around in. However, as we mentioned before, the optimum setting for C-Log on the 5D Mark IV is at 400 ISO. So on the day we filmed outside and it was extremely bright. So we had to shoot at 100 ISO, especially as we didn't have any ND filters. And inside we weren't using much external lighting, so we had to shoot at 1600 ISO. So in both cases, we didn't actually get to shoot C-Log at the optimal ISO value. With bright sunlight, it's already difficult enough to see the LCD screen on the camera. Add in the C-Log picture settings and it's almost near impossible to see what's going on. Even with DPAF, I had issues focusing this particular moving shot, which is ultimately out of focus when it reaches Arcos's face. However, you're also given an option with the C-Log menu to add a vivid picture style overlay, which you can turn on and is supposed to help you see what you're filming, but you still get the neutral C-Log image when you take the footage out of your camera. As mentioned before, I found myself <laughs> shooting mostly at 1600 ISO inside, but that being said, we were still left with some pretty rich images. And if you go check out the short film and watch it in 4K on YouTube, you'll be able to see that for yourself. You will know when the time comes. Now, obviously, the whole point of C-Log is being able to color grade. As long as you've exposed the video correctly, the color grade can really pop. If we jump into Premiere really quickly here and look at the waveform scopes, we notice that the C-Log files are pulled back on the extremities of the blacks and the whites, as opposed to your standard camera picture settings, which fill the whole spectrum. And we can see here that clipping has still occurred in the blown out white areas, but with all the extra space, we can now color grade knowing that a lot of these details will have been retained in these areas. So before C-Log, I generally shot in a neutral picture style already, so I don't have much camera saturation or sharpening added to my footage, but C-Log is genuinely what you need to retain details in the whites and black areas of your picture. We can do a little bit of color correction here to show you. So we're using the basic color panel here and we can boost the exposure. We can boost the contrast a little bit, uh, maybe uh, take the whites up a little and also pull the blacks back. So maybe crush the blacks. Then under creative, we can sharpen the image a little bit more. We can add in a little vibrance. And here we can see that even with basic color correction, it's already making a massive difference to our footage. So what are the cons of C-Log, apart from the fact that you've got to pay for it? Well, of course, it requires color grading almost always afterward. An important thing to remember is that some features are also not supported in the Canon Log mode. And this is in-camera HDR, time-lapse movies, auto exposure and auto ISO, peripheral illumination is not available in 4K, and of course your picture styles are going to be greyed out, which is what you would expect because you're going to be using the Canon C-Log. So should you get it? Now in my opinion, the richness in the color for the grade is something that you can't really achieve with the standard picture styles. As long as you expose your picture correctly, the options and flexibility that C-Log gives you for your creative projects is extremely useful. And if you've got a 5D Mark IV, it can really take it to the next level. And I think it's important to use an option like this for projects that are going to be important to you. So if you're doing something like a colder type travel video, a wedding video, or even your own short film, you would probably want to use this functionality to be able to retain as much quality as possible. If you're doing something like a standard vlog or quick on the go filming that you don't really wanna to spend too much time color grading or maybe you don't have the time to color grade, then it probably wouldn't be necessary to turn it on. But I also feel that once you've got it and you've used it, it's gonna be very hard to go back to not having that as an option. So yeah, maybe I will end up just shooting everything in C-Log anyway. So those are my thoughts on Canon C-Log. What about you guys? Do you think you'll be getting it? Do you think it's worth it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. So that's it for today, guys. All that's left to say is stay creative, imagine, implement, and inspire, and I will catch you in the next video on Kai Creative.